ahead and get started. A Recording in progress. Open Meetings Act is located outside on the table as well as on our website. There's also an automatic external defibrillator on the back wall of the legislative chambers. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge I am going to ask that we go into the Board of Commissioners first. Um, we do have an item that um, needs to be taken up because we're going to lose our um, jail administrator um, director because um, he has to go up to a personnel hearing. So um, could we do a roll call into the Board of Commissioners meeting? Commissioner Boyle. Here. Commissioner Kavanaugh is absent. Commissioner Friend. Here. Commissioner Garcia. Commissioner Morgan. Mr. Rogers, Madam Chair. Um, here, present. We'll move down to the committees. The administrative services um, item is resolution accepting the proposal of Carl Sin West Pavandra Architects for Design and Contract Administration Services for the Douglas County Corrections Mental Health Unit Capital Improvement Project and directing county staff to present a contract to the county board at a later date. Um, is there a motion to approve? Is there a second? second? Any questions or comments? Commissioner Boyle. I just want to uh, make sure that um, Jerry Leahy and his staff have been able to express that a, an a RFP was done on this too. So if one of them are available to comment, I would appreciate that. Or I don't think they're uh, here. Commissioners, yeah, I'm not sure if they're online. Maybe they thought that. Maybe they didn't know it was going to be moved up. Oh. But well, what I can say is Patrick Bloomingdale, County Administrator, there was an RFP done. There was one proposal submitted by Carlson West Pavandra. They're going to be working in partnership with HDR, although Carlson West will be the contractor. This was reviewed by the county's A&E committee as is normally done, the normal procedure. And then that A&E committee brings a recommendation to this board. So this is simply accepting the proposal this doesn't bind the county. Uh, the county will not be bound in any arrangement until a contract is presented to this board for approval at a later date. All right, very good. I just wanted that explanation on the record. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Anyone else wishing to speak on this item? Please vote. Oh, hang on. Uh, Ed Fogarty, uh, 521 North 38th Street, Omaha, Nebraska. I've appeared on this uh, many times before you, as has Hal Dobb. Uh, all the commissioners got a lengthy email from me uh, over the weekend and from Hal Dobb telling you that you're in a high risk of clawback. My problem with the Provanda report and the idea that uh, this approval goes forward to go forward with some more planning on uh, new construction or remodeling uh, is that you're inviting uh, clawback uh, at a high risk and why you would proceed to do that until the people who have warned you first of all in order the statutes premier on the area of the funding by health and human services for mental health care uh, behavioral health care and substance abuse disorders recommends, recommends that counties are to be facilitators of getting that service out to the people, not the providers in new buildings, not the providers in jails, and every commentator on it from the federal government to your own National Association of Counties, uh, to your own county attorney and to Deloitte very late in the process, June, June of this year, have told you that building for jails or congregate facilities is presumptively, presumptively is the term in the, in the federal uh, uh, regulations in the commentaries of the federal government and your own county one, county association 
adopting and trying to explain to you what the problem is tells you it's presumptively against the terms of the grant uh, for mental health to build buildings, to remodel buildings in excess of a million dollars, which is a gimme. So why you would go ahead and have Deloitte, who was so late to warn you about this, uh, and uh, Perrin, whose paper that he gave you recently is not an explanation of w the risk you uh, uh, serve, but a very carefully crafted thing to get back to the original plan of a new building. This is fraught with danger. And I also see an empty chair over there, that's Jim Cavanaugh. He's been kind of leading this fight, and I think some of the commissioners have had great, great reservations about going forward. So I would say you move this thing on down uh, uh, to September uh, when Kavanaugh's back and reconsider this. This is a matter you ought to move because you're going down a bad path uh, with a high risk and nobody except me and Hal Dobb and Kavanaugh have given you much warning of the size of that risk. You, Deloitte owes it to you, the county attorney owes it to you, and then they owe you a plan if you intend on building, they owe you a plan on how to weave through that very fraught path full of clawback traps. Thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to speak on this item? Seeing none, please vote. Then, Madam Chair, I had a oh, motion by- Oh, Commissioner Friend, sorry. It was a motion by Commissioner Boyle, second by Commissioner Rogers, but Commissioner Friend, okay. I just saw his light. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, uh, we, we, we received, <coughs> we received the mental health space study and proposed renovation of existing spaces within Douglas County's Department of Corrections last week. Uh, for a variety of reasons, I didn't look at it until probably yesterday afternoon and read through it as extensively as I could last night. Um, in, in my humble opinion, I don't know about the other commissioners, it's, it's not tenable, it, it doesn't work. That being said, to the, to, to the points that, that, that some people have made, and, and Mr. Fogarty, we appreciate your, your input on this, and, it, and it, uh, it's resonated. Um, the information that we've got back from the county attorney's office in Deloitte is that we have to mitigate and we have to do our due diligence. Well, arguably, we've done that. Arguably, we have done that. I'm not gonna litigate that here. I'm not a lawyer. I, I, I can try to be one, but that's pretty dangerous. The, the bottom line is this resolution, so, so, so A, we've done that analysis and we've done that potential mitigation, arguably. B, this resolution does nothing more than say, we did send this out for request for proposal, and further, we reject what we looked at next last week. We're actually putting forward the same thing that five of these commissioners voted for to actually analyze the creation of new mental health correction space. Now, None of that actually, none of this resolution actually binds us to that financially or practically. What we have to do is look at a contract and then we have to implement it. And we're going to do that at a later date. C, my point is this is almost innocuous. We have to do this procedurally to get to a point where we can actually understand A, how much money we're gonna spend and B, whether we can actually do this functionally, and this board believes that functionally we can actually accomplish this, this goal. Um, we're, we're a third of the way through this process. I, I, the first inclination I had yesterday, final point, Madam Chair, the first inclination I had yesterday was, I'm not ready. 
So, so I, picked, I, I picked up this study. I looked at two of the other studies last night, and I said, no, I'm as ready as I'm going to be because I'm not committing myself to anything. What I'd like to do is talk about the 33 million that we earmarked and say, look, are there cost savings here? Are there cost savings there? Are there cost savings down the road that we haven't analyzed? We're going to get an opportunity to do that. I just wanted to tell the citizens and anybody else that we hear the arguments loud and clear. The question is, why should we stop general procedure, especially if I spent you know, four hours combing through documents that took me four hours because I had to go back and read it over and over again. I, I guess I'm ready is what I'm saying. Um, I think we move this forward and start analyzing things in an appropriate fashion as we move uh, down the road here. So Madam Chair, thank you for the time. Thank you. Uh, I see no other lights, no other comments. Please vote. won't work. Okay. Uh, how are you voting then, Madam Chair? Yes. Okay. Motion passes 6 to 0. Please note Commissioner Borgeson is voting yes. With that, we will recess from the Board of Commissioners and go back to the Board of Equalization. Is there a motion? A motion by Commissioner Rogers, second by Commissioner Boyle. Please vote. Uh, Madam Chair, if it's still not working for you, I'll probably just do a voice vote from here on out. Yeah, so, it's okay. not it, working. Are you, you're voting yes, though? Yes. Okay. Motion passes 6 to 0. Okay, we will go to Board of Equalization. Roll call, please. Commissioner Boyle. Here. Commissioner Cavanaugh is absent. Uh, Commissioner Friend. Here. Commissioner Garcia. Here. Commissioner Morgan. Here. Commissioner Rogers. Here. Madam Chair. Present. Item A, approval of the minutes of the Board of Equalization meeting held Tuesday, August 22nd, 2023. And item B, call for a meeting and set Tuesday, September 12th, 2023 as a date for hearing on certified assessment corrections reflecting the addition of omitted property to the tax roll or increased value on property. Is there a motion to approve? Yes. Motion by Commissioner Rogers, second by Commissioner Morgan. Any questions or comments? Please vote. And we're going to do a voice vote. Commissioner, Bo uh, Commissioner Boyle, excuse me. Yes. Commissioner Friend. Yes. Commissioner Garcia. Commissioner Morgan. Yes. Commissioner Rogers. Yes. Madam Chair. Yes. Motion passes six to zero. The citizen comments. Is there anyone wishing to speak to the Board mm -hmm. of Equalization about an item not on the agenda? Larry Storer, 5015 Lafayette Avenue. Omaha 68132. I want to bring something up this morning that's related to county because the city, county, school systems, and the taxing authorities, uh, entities, they're all interrelated and somehow come into this body for discussions and decisions in relation to equalization of the tax burden. I won't get a chance probably to, to say this at the city council today. They're not as friendly as you people. They they don't have a, an area of their agenda where you can speak as a citizen for five minutes or less. But this has to do with TIF financing. Last week, the city council attempted to dis, dis, describe and explain TIF financing to the citizens. They had a handout for the first time, and I don't know, I never saw a handout on it or an explanation since 2015 or 2016. But this flip chart thing that they really didn't get, really didn't get to the meat of the matter, it still does not answer the question that citizens have, and have been denied a true answer. That question is, how does TIF financing affect a property owner, whether they live in the TIF district, which is that block of properties, for example, the crossroads. Maybe they don't live within that boundary, but they're right across the street. Taxpayers for Freedom a few years back had a very extensive paper on that and explained it all. 
and how it actually uh, affects the property owners in Omaha, their property tax. Everybody else denies that. But when you take the money away from the school systems for 15 years, how do you make up the difference? Even the taxing body here loses some of that money during that 15 years that a developer or owner is granted a special privilege of not having to pay something. The way it looks and the way it appeared on that handout is no better than what I'm saying today. That it's kind of like a circus game, a, a magic game, a card game, uh, switcheroo, uh, divert their attention while we do this because even the state has to make up the money that you give away, that you do not make the developer pay. The state has to make up that money because you lost some and so did the school system for the 15 years, now going on 20. However, a few years back, and I think it's still happening, it's being misused for undefined properties a way for somebody to buy a property just after you blight it to a lower value. So he pays maybe taxes on that for 15 years. He gets a big break, doesn't he? School systems lose that revenue. Oh yes, they get it back in 15 years at a higher rate if the person that developed that property stays in Omaha. It's kind of like a wimpy burger. I'll gladly pay you tomorrow for a hamburger today. They need to own up to who they makes up that tax dollars that's given away to a developer or owner before they move out of Omaha. Anyone else wishing to speak to the Board of Equalization about an item not on the agenda? <clears throat> Seeing none, um, I am going to take a break here because I'm afraid we're going to lose um, our guest and I'd like Val to come up and just give us a short presentation of who these wonderful young people are with us this morning. Val McPherson, 6415 Glenwood Road, Omaha, Nebraska. Good morning, Douglas County Commissioners. Uh, thank you again for helping UNO host a delegation of future international leaders. Uh, as you are all well aware of, uh, for the last nine years, I've had the privilege of being able to bring you delegations primarily from Southeast Asia known as the Waisili program. Due to UNO's success with that program, uh, they are now hosting a program called BOLD. Uh, this is the second time that we have hosted this. The first time was a year ago. Uh, the 36 people seated behind me uh, come from three different Balkan countries, Bosnia-Herzegovina, Serbia, and Montenegro. Uh, just like the Waisili delegations, uh, they have been selected as the future leaders of those countries uh, by our embassies uh, in their countries. Uh, thank you again for allowing us to attend your meeting and see how county government works. Uh, and Marianne, I would like to thank you for your uh, time this morning to explain county government to them uh, previous to this meeting. So, um, Bowles, uh, would you please all stand to be recognized? And would one of you like to step forward and uh, uh, give your appreciation on behalf of the group to the county commissioners? Are there any items? <clears throat> Sorry, I have the people spoken. I will tell them. I have a joy. I didn't see it. But. Honorable Commissioners, it is our great honor to be here and have the opportunity about learning um, how your um, 
uh, institution works. Uh, we really appreciate it and it means a lot to us. Uh, we are uh, very welcomed here at UNO and in the whole United States of America. Our journey so far has been very amazing and very um, inspirational for all of us. Coming from the Western Balkans, as you know, um, we really appreciate being here and it means um, a lot to be able to learn uh, and to be able to uh, grow in your amazing country. And as you know, our fellowship is about civic engagement. So we are spending five weeks here in the United States and we are being equipped with knowledge and skills uh, to be able to implement our own project back when we get home. And hopefully our projects will be successful and you will be uh, a huge part of our journey by inspiring us and giving us this opportunity. So thank you very much and we wish you all the best. Same to you. Thank you for visiting. I would just like to close with the reminder that I always give you. And um, as some of you know, I have been uh, hosting Air National Visitors for the State Department for 21 years, including the Air National Visitor Leadership Program. And uh, these fine young people were chosen basically in the same manner that uh, the visitors for the International Visitor Leadership Program are chosen. And uh, so I would just like to remind you that the alumni of that program, uh, 1,000 of them have now on, gone on to be either president mm. or prime minister of their country. So there is a good probability that a future president or prime minister of the Balkans is sitting before you today. Thank you again for hosting us. Thank you again for being here. I hope you enjoy your stay. And bow whenever you need to exit, that's fine. Um, okay, we'll move to resolutions. We have two resolutions, D and E. Is there a motion to approve? Motion by Commissioner Rogers, second by Commissioner Morgan. Any questions or comments? Please vote. Commissioner Boyle. Yes. Commissioner Friend. Yes. Commissioner Garcia. Commissioner Morgan. Commissioner Rogers, yes. Madam Chair. Yes. Motion passes six to zero. We have one protest to protest of personal property taxes for Spark 1111 North 13th Street, Omaha 68102. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioners. Mike Goodwillie, Douglas County Assessor, Register of Deeds Office. In all candor, I'm not entirely sure what this is, and let me give you some background. Um, if an entity is operating a, a business uh, they have one of two options every year if they have what we call business personal property, computers, office equipment, things like that, that are typically used in the production of income and are depreciated on a business's per, uh, income tax return. They have one of two options. They could file a personal property tax return and those are due on May 1st of every year. Or if they're a nonprofit that has that kind of equipment, they could file a property tax exemption application. Those are due December 31st of every year. There's a late filing period with penalty, but that window shuts at the end of June. Um, Spark Inc. is somebody that we had never gotten a filing on uh, from before, either of those things. Um, somebody left their phone up here. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I, you know, if that were me, I'd walk off and leave it, so. Um, but anyway, Spark Inc. Uh, had never filed anything with us, a personal property return or uh, a property tax exemption application um, until May of this year when they filed a personal property return. And when we receive a personal property return, we review those returns and what is on them to see when that property was placed in service and what the depreciation ought to be and what the net book value ought to be uh, because sometimes that's a little tricky even for accounting firms. And what we discovered on Sparks Return is they had been putting property into use, meaning they'd been up and operating with that property as far back as 2017. So in that scenario, we go back because there were no filings for 2021 and 22 uh, we are limited to going back three years if somebody hasn't filed a return. And we put together uh, penalty assessments, basically saying, you didn't file a return, here's the property we think you had for those years um, on which taxes will be due. In response, 
Uh, we got correspondence, or we got a, a call from a partner at Frankel LLC, an accounting firm, and basically they threw a young associate under the bus. They said, well, we should have filed a, a, a property tax exemption, but a young associate screwed this up um, and sent in a personal property return instead. And in their protest, they turn around and they say, well, not only should you not charge us any taxes for 2023, you should uh, abate taxes and exempt the prior years even though no uh, exemption application has been filed. I guess boiling it down, we've gotten a personal property return from these folks. We've never gotten a property tax exemption application from these folks. In fact, as proof that they were going to file one, they sent a copy of an unsigned return um, that still has never been filed. Um, and candidly, in looking at that return, I don't know what the heck Spark Inc. does. They don't bother to tell us. So um, I guess what I'm telling you is, at this juncture, they've asked you to abate prior year's taxes, which you don't have the authority to do. And, and uh, they somehow want to convert this personal property return in an ex into an exemption application and we're well past the time to file an exemption application. So I think at this point, I think at this point the remedy is to dismiss the protest. If these folks want to file exemptions in future years, I suppose they can. Um, but in any event, um, there isn't anything here for you to do. Okay. So what is the will of the board? Is there a second? Second. Motion by Commissioner Morgan, second by Commissioner Friend. Any further questions or comments? Madam Chair, will that include adjournment as well? Uh, yes, we have no need for executive session, so that could include adjournment. Are you okay? Yes. Right. Roll call. And I, I apologize, it was the, to dismiss the protest? Yes, Correct. And okay. Adjourn. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, Commissioner Boyle. <laughs> yes. Commissioner Friend. Yes. Commissioner Garcia. Commissioner Morgan. Yes. Commissioner Rogers. Madam Chair. Yes. Motion passes six to zero. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. And now could we get a motion to uh, reconvene into the ag agenda for the Douglas County Board of Commissioners? Motion by Commissioner Rogers, second by Commissioner uh, Morgan. Um, this will also constitute the roll call. Commissioner Boyle. Yes. Commissioner Friend. Yes. Commissioner Garcia. Commissioner Morgan. Yes. Commissioner Rogers. Yes. Madam Chair. Yes. Next are the minutes um, in claims. Item A, approval of the minutes of the Board of Commissioners meeting held Tuesday, August 22nd, 2023. And item B, approval of claims submitted for payment process through Tuesday, September 5th, 2023. Is there a motion to approve A and B? Yes. Motion by Commissioner Rogers, second by Commissioner Morgan. Any questions or comments? Please vote or roll call. Sorry. Commissioner Boyle. Yes. Commissioner Friend. Yes. Commissioner Garcia. Commissioner Morgan, yes. Commissioner Rogers, yes. Madam Chair. Yes. Motion passes six to zero. Next is our consent agenda. Um, please note that items A, one through seven are going to be laid over until the fifth. So that leaves items B through K. Is there a motion to approve consent agenda items B through K minus A, one through seven? Uh, or not the fifth, the twelfth. Thank you. The twelfth. Okay. Motion by Commissioner Rogers. Is there a second? Please. Commissioner Garcia. Okay. Any further questions or comments? Please roll call. Commissioner Boyle. Yes. Commissioner Friend. Yes. Commissioner Garcia. Commissioner Morgan, yes. Commissioner Rogers, yes. Madam Chair. Yes. Motion passes six to zero. Next, we have two recognitions. We have a recognition of two county employees that are retiring. James O'Donnell, who worked for the Douglas County Health Center for 49 years, and Randy Papineau, who worked for the Douglas County Treasurer's Office for 17 years. Um, neither one of those are with us today, but um, on behalf of the board, we wish them great success in their retirement and uh, thank them for their dedication and hard work on behalf of the citizens of Douglas County. Uh, is there a motion to approve? 
motion. Did you make the motion? Uh, Maureen. Commissioner Boyle made the motion and Commissioner Garcia seconded. Any further questions or comments? And Madam Chair, this is for both recognition for items. For both recognition. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Please, uh, roll call. Commissioner Boyle. Yes. Commissioner Friend. Yes. Commissioner Garcia. Yes. Commissioner Morgan. Yes. Commissioner Rogers. Yes. Madam Chair. Yes. Motion passes six to zero. Citizen comments, is there anyone in the chamber or on Zoom wishing to speak to the Board of Commissioners about an item not on the agenda? Good morning. Good morning, thank you. My name is Ken Anderson, Douglas County, and just want to address the uh, topic of the gold standard for counting in elections, for counting votes in elections, and that would not be by electronics machines. That would not be computerized. The gold standard for counting votes in elections is by hand. Uh, there have been several recounts uh, where even the machines don't agree with from one count to the next uh, nationwide, and I brought up three last week. Uh, I'll just mention those three again because those deal with es and &S. Although there are many other brands, I, I'm just focusing on these three from es and Scott County, Iowa, and these are all from last November. Scott County, Iowa, Legislative District 81. Uh, a hand count finally settled that race. Uh, they didn't trust the machines. Uh, Monmouth County in New Jersey, a court ordered that race to be settled by hand count. Didn't trust the machines. And uh, the uh, New Hampshire race uh, was settled by machine because they just didn't do a hand count. But uh, when it comes down to it, the gold standard for counting of votes in elections is to throw out the electronics link and go hand to eye. And uh, I hope you take that seriously. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak to the Board of Commissioners about an item not on the agenda? Good morning. I beat Larry. Jaquela Yarvro of Compete Institute. I miss you guys. I've been off for two months. Um, this morning, I got five minutes. Um, just want to revisit two things. Um, our offices are getting a lot of um, calls for assistance with housing um, for the county. Um, I know that you know property valuations have come in and property has gone up, and so the renter is eating that cost. Um, I encourage the county on an innovation, innovative end to come up with some type of strategy to um, somehow tie the quality of a property and the quality of living to um, property assessment. Um, I realized that, you know, I was here for the meeting where that department came in and they talked a little bit about how they value a property and um, but it's it's just completely unreal for the average person living in Douglas County and it's something if you guys are interested in moving that conversation forward we're definitely doing the predictive analytics on it so um, secondly um, you hear me out on this I've been singing the same song for about three years but um, concerning this new um, youth justice center um, we don't have to put a single child in there we could repurpose that space uh, I think that there has been, and I, I just, I, I'm trying to figure out a why, and I've talked to my mentors on the predictive analytics in internationally, and the conversation that we're having is, if we already have a facility that is housing these children, that's equipped to house these children, why is there such a push to put them in a new facility that may not be the best fit for them? Um, we're looking at their social emotional growth. We're looking at their complete rehabilitation. And housing children in the middle of downtown between the courthouse and the county jail is, just, is not a healthy fit. I'm just trying to figure out where the push to fit this circular peg in this square hole is coming from and why we just can't visit something else, another use for this space, um, particularly because most of those kids who go in there, our numbers show, are going to be black, and they're probably going to be, the rest of them are Hispanic, and we might get two or three white kids or an Indian kid. Um, but I think, I know, because I've, I've done the numbers on this over and over again, the numbers show that if we're putting that money up front, prevention and intervention, which is putting that, muni, that money into community-based organizations who are touching these families for free every day, 
we're going to make a difference. We're literally, we don't have the sources and the capacity to treat the need for families. Housing them in jail is going to create a bigger, badder criminal. They're going to go from that baby jail to the county to Lincoln or OCC, and they're coming right back into the same community. And so I urge you to think of something innovative to do with that space, uh, because just putting them in a 64-bed facility, uh, not to mention, uh, we're going to pay for it. Everyone in Omaha. So I know that people don't think we have a race problem, and that's, you know, neither here nor there, I guess, at some point. But one thing for sure is we will all share the tax burden of maintaining this facility and any other facility that we build without a, a 30, 50 year plan for operations. And so I thank you for your time this morning. Good to see everybody. Anyone else wishing to speak to the board about an item not on the agenda? <clears throat> Good morning, Larry Storer, 5015 Lafayette Avenue, <coughs> Omaha 68132. First of all, I'm sorry, Mary Ann, but I cannot hear you today. I can hear Dan, I can hear other people, but I cannot hear you. There's something wrong with this system. Use some ARPA dollars since you're giving it away and fix the system, please. Next item, back to the elections. Last week, all of a sudden, we had people rushing to try and cover over what people like myself and this gentleman are trying to get across and get you people to discuss, which is the stolen election. I sent you an email and I have a copy I'm going to give Dan for inclusion in the record. Mr. Robert J. Bohr does have skin in the game. We citizens, or we the people, do not feel like we have to sue everybody in our government to get discussions of this nationwide problem. The use of the machines, and when the machines are doing something that's not lawful, the contract for those machines is no longer valid. But we have Secretary of State and his assistants that think they are, will not answer requests for private information uh, suit documents. They deny it, will not discuss it, neither will you folks. But that's what that's about, Dan. I, I'm not gonna read it all. But the latest from Mr. Borer is he has finally got an answer from one of the state senators, which is Mr. Erdman, again refuting and touting his own bill that he introduced that, by the way, the legislature didn't pass to try and uh, improve, or in some cases, maybe cover up what is wrong with the Nebraska election system. It's not just Nebraska either, it's, it's nationwide. Dominion machines, ESS machines. The state has paid an exorbitant amount of money for these machines, and they can't get answers from those people about the machines and about the software. Software can be manipulated. Machines can be manipulated. And the citizens of this country want to know why a lot of votes disappeared during the 2020 election. And why we have to have mail-in voting that's susceptible to theft of those votes and too many extra mail-in ballots mailed out to people, people that are dead. People that aren't dead, they get four or five of those applications. Why won't you people talk about those things? You won't, judges won't listen to the evidence. They say there's no evidence, but they won't listen. It's never been presented to them because they will not hear it. This is anti-constitutional. Citizens, we the people, demand performance of your oath of office to protect and serve and defend the Constitution of the United States. Your primary duty is protection of us, protection of our rights, our right to vote and have it counted. Now, there is a misstatement on the news all the time that Mr. Trump said, I just want to find 1,100, 11, that's one more vote than I got. And then they have the period mark for they didn't give you the rest of the sentence. What he was saying was, somebody stole one vote. That cost me the election. 
and common sense has prompted over 200 million people to tune into a discussion of those things One minute. with uh, Fox News, uh, the name dropped on my mind, and Donald Trump instead of the Republican debates, which weren't presidential debates, but the media called them presidential debates. Those people are not presidents. Let Douglas County be the leader of all the 93 counties in Nebraska and invite Secretary of State, the Attorney General, the Douglas County Attorney, and the Election Commission to sit there like I do as a citizen commenter while we present. And we get to talk twice and maybe call them back two or three times instead of vice versa. We might even limit them to three minutes, by the way. And, and by the way, I was hoping to let him go first. Time. Okay. Thank you, Larry. Because he's obviously cooking something up. Thank you, Larry. And he's probably a documenter. Larry, thank you. He should Time declare that up. he is if he is. Larry, thank is you. He? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Louis C. Menace, 2709 Dewey Avenue. I am not a documenter, um, Madam Chair. I've actually looked at the documenter's work, and it's more uh, convoluted than your agenda and your minutes. So I, 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 if documenters are watching right now, I think they need to change their, uh, um, their notes to, to make it more clear about um, what they're reporting on, because it's, it's kind of uh, more difficult to follow than your regular agenda. Um, so did you hear that, Larry? I have a critique you know, uh, on um, uh, I mean, if I, I do kind of report, uh, so does Larry, so does anybody who shares what happened here today. I mean, if you want to get down to it, reporting is sharing information. Anyway, uh, what I would like to talk about is um, the um, um, the detention center over here. I want to uh, augment my comments about what was said about the youth services during uh, the development and prior to construction. Uh, the, uh, uh, the juvenile justice services that I'm talking about are an alternative to detention. There were, by now, they were supposed to set, be set up and functioning in a way that it would be attractive for judges to send them to those services um, and not to detention. That is not being demonstrated uh, today. You know, you, and Mr. Rogers, you can provide articles of incorporation for juvenile justice services, but that's not going to sit, uh, that's not going to move a judge. Articles of incorporations are not going to uh, move a judge. What's going to move a juvenile justice judge is efficacy uh, on uh, services. And the, the thinking was that if you mani manipulate space, if you create space or reduce space, whatever, um, you have more control over what's happening. And so the majority of the board said, let's build it downtown. It's going to be beneficial to the juveniles because there's going to be services down here. In fact, there's going to be, there's a bus route to downtown. There's multiple bus routes to downtown. So w the kids are going to get up early, get on a bus, and get reformed at the detention center uh, facility. Not in a cell. I didn't think that was going to be a cell where they were going to go to. I thought there was going to be a space uh, for them that was maybe trauma-informed, uh, that had uh, experts in the room that was going to help them to uh, move away from criminality. That was th the idea. So I don't think I'm rehashing it. I'm, th I'm telling you what you failed at. 
you failed at uh, providing an alternative to detention today. So I just wanted to communicate that to you, Madam Chair, particularly because there were so many uh, excuses, I don't call them excuses, just rationales as to why um, you needed a detention center downtown. And one of them was the bus system. And I take the bus. <laughs> and I knew one that minute. that was not gonna be inspirational. Uh, I am a, a, I agree that your sound system it needs uh, fas better fashioning, particularly to the uh, YouTube videos um, on uh, dot com. The, the this meeting and the two p.m. meeting, when you listen to it on YouTube and you crank it up, it's still hard to listen to. Um, so at the Larry is smart to sit um, close by, but if you're not here at attendance uh, and you don't have a great device, it's, good, it's hard to he hear the meetings. You, you, I was listening to the live stream earlier and I, I had to do something like this. Um, so um, maybe that's for the Public Time. Building Commission. I don't know, but improve. Thank you. Thanks. Ford Momarts, 1511 Farnham. And this is definitely not on your agenda, but I won't take the full five minutes. Um, and I'm still blind. Is Commissioner Kavanaugh he's still here? Pardon? He's not here today. He's yeah. not here today. Okay, I can't see yet. So um, then thank you for your time. All right. Anyone else wishing to speak to the board about an item not on the agenda? All right. Next, we'll move to committees. The first being the Finance Committee, budget report as presented. And then there is one resolution, amend the resolution confirming intended use of an award of 100,000 to the North Omaha Cultural Center to help develop a tourism and multicultural center. Is there a motion to approve item two? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Boyle, seconded by Commissioner Rogers. Any questions or comments? Please go ahead. <coughs> Larry Store, 5015 Lafayette Avenue, Omaha 68132. I, I believe I heard you correctly, Marianne, but uh, still can't hear you that well. I think we're talking about ARPA funds for the North Omaha Cultural Center. I'm against the resolution, again, primarily because of language, but also, you know, I think the World Herald had an article in the paper about uh, early childhood education maybe going underwater because the ARPA funds are running out and there won't be funds money next year or whatever. So why are we giving money to businesses to build their business or replace their uh, structures, their air conditioning, their physical plant, even help them keep their heads above water? I don't know who wrote the guidelines, and I'm not a lawyer, but interpreting those guidelines, excuse me, we shouldn't be giving money away for anything ever the sun under the cover of ARPA funds. Federal government was a usurpation of the concept of federalism. These matters should be left for the states, not the federal government. And when you use federal dollars, you're subjugating us to federal rules. We'd like to take back our government. Thank you. That. No other questions or comments? Please vote. Commissioner Boyle? Yes. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Garcia? Yes. Commissioner Morgan? Yes. Commissioner Rogers? Yes. Madam Chair? Yes. Motion passes six to zero.
Um, next uh, is the Human Resources Weekly Personnel Report from Civil Service as presented. No legislative items at this time. We do have need for an executive session for litigation and legal advice. Is there a motion? Motion by Commissioner Rogers, second by Commissioner Morgan. Um, before we go into executive session, please note the Board of Commissioners will not meet on Tuesday, September 5th. The next scheduled meeting of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners will be Tuesday, September 12th. Roll call. Commissioner Boyle. Yes. Commissioner Friend. Yes. Commissioner Garcia. Commissioner Morgan. Yes. Commissioner Rogers. Yes. Madam Chair. Yes. Motion passes six to zero. Recording stopped.
Motion to reconvene and adjourn by Commissioner Rogers, second by Commissioner Boyle. Motion passes six to zero. We're adjourned to 11.06 a.m.